Hi there, this is Mrs. Hall again with your unit on Gavage Feeding. You can find all the links for this video series Nursing 3101 L in the description box below. Having a patient with a nasogastric or orogastric tube can be intimidating. Being aware of what you're dealing with can go a long way. Be sure to always speak with your client and build a relationship with them. These procedures go rather easily when the patient is relaxed. First, check the patient chart. Note any allergies. Note the feed that is prepared. Also, assess level of consciousness, respiratory effort, and check bowel sounds to ensure that there isn't a problem with intolerance of feeding. In neonates, we have to pay attention to weight gain and abdominal girth to establish intolerance of feeding since these changes are readily seen with them. Be aware of your instructions. They may recommend withholding feeds if residual feeds are above a certain amount. Residual feeds can be checked every four hours when feeding is started or every six to eight hours for those not critically ill. Patients with in-situ tubes can have conditions like digestive order, disorders, dementia, autoimmune hepatitis, atrial septal defects, or some cancers. This again is a clean procedure. You will need a 60 ml syringe with a catheter tip simply because it attaches well to the tube. Be sure to have on hand an emesis basin, pH strips, a large syringe, um, and a measuring container. Your water can be at room temperature unless it's otherwise specified. And if there is a feeding pump required, you'll need to know how to hook it up and how to operate it. The patient is placed in a 30 to 45 degree angle, same as when we've placed the tube. To enhance gravitational flow uh, of the feed and also to prevent aspiration. As usual, be sure to build rapport with the client and ensure that they understand the procedure. So remember, we're doing level of consciousness, respiratory effort, pain, any discomfort that may be caused by tube placement. Feeding should not cause discomfort, but there may be a feeling of fullness. Of course, hand hygiene is necessary for asepsis, and providing privacy is also a must. Our video for hand hygiene is located in the, a, a link is posted in the description section below. So, to start the procedure, we apply clean gloves. And our 60cc syringe with that special tip is this one. This is the normal syringe that you would see the one that attaches a needle and this is the one that we're going to need for feeding. Notice it has a wider lumen so thick feeds can also be tolerated better. In most cases you will notice that the feeding tube is clamped off. We clamp off the feeding tube because we want to ensure that the patient does not have an excess amount of air entering the stomach. It can cause abdominal distension. So what we are going to do is to aspirate first. So we attach our syringe. I will create a bend there so that I can release what I have and then aspirate slowly to get back the content. After you've gotten back the content, please remember we are trying not to get air into this um, tube. So, 
We then clamp it off, disconnect. You're going to measure your content that you have aspirated and take a pH test of it. If you find that your pH is equal to or greater than six, you will need to report it for further care. So either your nurse in charge or your doctor is going to have to be aware of that. So another thing you need to know is that your feedings can also be done through a drip chamber system, which is attached similar to an IV set. And it's allowed to flow as it's hung from an IV pole, just about 12 inches or so above the level of the insertion point. You do not want that to be too high because if it's up high, then the feeding will flow much faster. So if it goes just about a foot above the patient's insertion point, then it controls the flow. So you would run the formula through the tubing before attaching it to prevent the air entering the, the stomach, just the same way that you would do it with an IV um, tubing. So this is what we would consider our residual feed. This is the feeding that we get back after this patient would have already digested some of what we fed him last. We aspirate it, we measure it, but the patient has to get it back. So you would then put this on remove notice i'm still clamped remove the plunger our feet is green just for a difference in color no other reason so this is a good reason to have your patient draped and you will make sure that you pay attention to how much feed your patient is receiving so I've got the first 60 cc's in the syringe. Notice that first 60 cc's includes the residual feed that I have gotten. So if you have a patient that requires a specific amount, then you know that that patient is then going to be getting just what they're supposed to get. So once you have your fluid running higher, it's going to run faster. And you can slow it down by taking your feed down and we go up it goes higher so you make sure you catch it before it all runs out because you, you're still trying to avoid having air enter the system and you fill your syringe for as many times as you need to, to get the required amount of feed in now, when you're finished with your feed, you're going to run through just about 50 to 100 mLs of water. Why are we going to do that? That's to flush this tubing out. The fluid I put in here is green. Normally, feeds are a slight um, white color or maybe uh, yellowish, but I've put through something green just to show a difference. So when you're finished with that, you have to run through about 50 to 100 cc's of water. Notice I've put 55 cc's. I've marked that I've put 55 cc's. And I run through that water, make it go in there, and I stop it before air has entered the system. Now I can clamp that tube back off, disconnect, ensure that my patient is comfortable, ensure that everything is gone well, and then I will remove the drape that I've put on the patient and continue to ensure that everything has gone well for them. And continue to dispose of my equipment, making sure that anything that's supposed to be reused is washed properly and attended to in the manner that it is required by protocol for the, um, uh, the, the facility that I work in. So please remember, you aspirate, 
whatever you've aspirated, you have to put back in and count it as a part of the feed that has been given. Make sure that you avoid air going into the tubing so that you are not having your patient result with uh, abdominal distension. All right, so that is it for our lesson on feeding. So, kvash feeding. I'll talk to you guys later.